John Robinson out as GM of the Titans. OBJ, well, he might not be healthy enough to play until mid-January. And, well, Baker Mayfield, he's Los Angeles bound. You are locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Again, and welcome in to another edition of Locked On NFL. He's Tony Wiggins. I'm James Erpine, and this is Locked On NFL. Today's episode brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And let's dive right on in, Tony, because yes, I was a bit surprised on Tuesday afternoon when we heard about the Titans firing, parting ways, whatever you want to say. With general manager John Robinson, he had just gotten a contract extension less than a year ago. And uh, a quick statement, since becoming controlling owner in 2015, and this is from Amy Adams Strunk, my goal has been to raise the standard of what is expected in all facets of our organization. I believe we have made significant progress both on and off the field, but I believe there is more to be done and higher aspirations to be met. What was your reaction? Uh, to to this news that John Robinson out in Nashville was surprised because there are people that would cut their right leg off to have the kind of stability that he has provided for the uh, Tennessee Titans. But I think much like I'll give an example to Dennis Green in Minnesota with his run of nine or 10, uh, 10, 10 win seasons in like 11 years. And then one that you covered Marvin Lewis, where always respectable, always uh, you know you know above 500 for the most of the time a threat to win it all but when you're sitting in that position for a long time it can get stale and especially in the uh, afc south where these teams have taken turns being doormats and i believe that they think that the titans are winning it by default because no one's there to challenge them but the ultimate goal is to win a championship i think the last straw and i'll be petty you saw A.J. Brown look like yep. the best player on the field the other day. Yep. And he probably looked around and be like, how do we even think about trading a guy like that? And I know Traylon Burks caught a touchdown and caught a concussion when he got hit. But the thing is, the idea is to get both of them on the field at the same time. That's, yep. that's the idea. Is to, is You don't have to have one great player at a time. Uh, when you play Kansas City, see, that's what people don't understand. You have to beat them. And you can't beat them even though I think they did get passed in one year in the playoffs, you can't beat them consistently uh, by being the way that they are. The other thing is I think it's a play for Mike Vrabel to have more power, and I don't blame him. I think when you're a coach like that and you have that cachet, you ought to be able to go in there and wield a stick. And if there's something that you disagree with, like maybe seeing your best player that you love run around on the field for somebody else, then I think at some point Vrabel says, look, I'll move on, man, if, if this is what we're going to do. But something has to change. And I totally agree with him. And I think Jacksonville yep. needs to do the same thing. I think – interesting, that little note at the end there. And obviously you cover the Jaguars for Locked on Jaguars. So Jaguars fans, go there now. Um, well, after the show. But the Mike Vrabel factor is the factor here that stands out to me. Because if I'm Mike Vrabel, and we know for a fact he was not happy with the A.J. Brown trade. And this has nothing to do with Traylon Burks. No, no doubt. It, when you find homegrown studs like A.J. Brown, you don't trade them the moment their contract comes up. No. You, you keep them, and you use them to do what? To win with, whether it's Ryan Tannehill, who's clearly a limited quarterback and needs weapons around him, or a young quarterback, whether it's Malik Willis or they go another route. Or, by the way, you think Brady wouldn't have went to, to Tampa but without all those weapons? Like, right. It, how do you attract the top talent or get the most out of a young quarterback or the path to winning in today's NFL is simple. It is as complicated as we make it, get weapons and then get more weapons and find a way to build around, you know, you know your, your quarterback and whether it was Ryan Tannehill or someone else, because I certainly have questions about him. You can't let AJ Brown go. And so I agree with you. I think that this was a power play. I think this started with the AJ Brown trade prior to that. When 
you know Mike Vrabel wanted him to get a deal done, and then he just happens to explode. And look what he's done for Jalen Hurts. Right. I, I mean, he's he's helped Hurts' development. Not saying Hurts wouldn't have gotten there. Right. But guess what? The best quarterbacks in the league need weapons. Right. And you had one of the better weapons, one of the more explosive weapons. So it might be that simple, and I'm sure there was a lot more to it, but the A.J. Brown move alone, that's a loss. You lost that deal. And, I, and, I'll and in, add this, this, in right. this weapons era, you can't lose deals like that. No, I'll give you a perfect example of that, and then I'll go back to, uh, to another point too. The Eagles drafted Devontae Smith. They had a very good rookie year, right? They go get A.J. Brown, and they go, Devontae, you're number two because that's how we're going to win a championship. Now, if people think that we have a chance to beat the best teams in the league, it's because we got you both. Yep. Right. That That's why that's what, you know, that's, that's how you do it. The other thing is, I don't know if, if there was any truth to it. I don't know if it's ever been substantiated, but there was rumors that Brady, when he said you're hanging on to that blankety blank, mm -hmm. a lot of rumors, a lot of people thought that it was Derek Carr and it turns out it wasn't for, from, from the rumors that I heard. Mm -hmm. Most people think it might have been Tennessee that they were sure. keeping Ryan Tannehill and not taking Tom Brady. So if there's somebody in that building that knows that, if Mike Vrabel is somebody in that building that knows that, they are looking right smack in the face. You can you can talk about how the Colts have tried. And you know what? I ain't going to be mad at the Colts if Andrew Luck walks out and you try with Phillip Rivers and then mm -hmm. you try with the former number two overall pick and then you try with Matt Ryan. You got two borderline Hall of Famers, you tried. And this is something that we had a nice, friendly debate about early in the season on our thread. They at least tried. And, and, and that's what you can give Chris Ballard a little credit for, even though you can beat him up too about a lot of things he's done. But you cannot give John Robinson credit for Brian Tannehill and the extension. He didn't mm -hmm. try. He didn't try to get beyond it. He thought he could win with it, and he couldn't. It's almost – it's barely a little bit better than the Jaguars holding on to Blake Bortles back in the day and trying to play a certain brand of football that can't win a championship. Yeah, I remember, and, and my cousin lives in Nashville, so he's he's not necessarily a Titans fan, but he follows it, obviously. He's a big sports fan, and you hear all the sports radio down there. And when that offseason, so after the, what, the 2019 season, so going, going into 2020, when Brady decided to go to Tampa, I'm like, go get him. Go get him. The Vrabel connection. You have these weapons. You have Derrick Henry. You have A.J. Brown, who was looking really good. Like It made so much sense, and they didn't. They extended Tannehill. And so I agree with you. By the and way. And then the questionable draft picks, too, over the last few years with Isaiah Wilson and all those. This, a lot of guys in the well, first, second round, I think they drafted a dude that the police was wanting. I mean, you got to – you. Gotta, you got to vet people enough to know that they ain't wanted by the cops when you draft them. You know what I'm saying? Yep. No doubt. And the Isaiah Wilson pick was one of the biggest busts. I mean, just brutal. And they weren't the only team that liked him, but you take him in the first round and he's gone a year later, doesn't, hasn't played for you at all. And right. did he even make it through the season? I don't even think he made it didn't through the season. He didn't make it through the season, got picked up by somebody else and did something stupid and, and he was gone. He's gone, just like that, out of the league. So, and By the way, uh, they say some mental health stuff. I hope he gets the help that he's – I'm not picking at him. Sure. I hope he gets the help, but – that's the stuff you have to do. You have to vet that stuff before you use uh, big time resources on it. Especially when, yeah, you're talking about a first round pick. You know, this isn't, you know, taking a flyer on a guy or something like that and not working. So from a GM standpoint, it's uh, it's unacceptable. And so I, I get why the Titans did it. Still caught me off guard now uh, at this point in the season, but that's uh, the route they went. We'll see if it pays off for them. Up next, we're going to continue to talk about weapons. Odell Beckham Jr. Is he going to be the Cowboys' newest weapon? We'll dive into that coming up next. But first, a word from Taro. Taro is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. And with Taro, T U R O, you can book any car you want wherever you want from a community of local hosts. So if you want that new electric vehicle, you want to test drive that thing, and well, you just want to bounce around town. And by the way, I did this in Dallas earlier this year, speaking of the Cowboys, week two, I was able to use Taro, I was able to, uh, you drive a Tesla, I'll say the, the model, and it was uh, it was cool the first time I did that. But the point is, is whether it is a, an electric vehicle or SUV, or maybe you want a minivan, or you want a flashy vehicle for a special event or birthday, you can find all of them on Taro. And it's across the US, UK, Canada, Australia. So don't delay. Check out Taro now. Many Taro hosts even deliver the car right to you. 
Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at tarot.com. All right, let's keep things rolling here, Tony, on a Wednesday edition of Locked On NFL. And as always, thank you so much for making us your first listen. This is a two-parter, and we'll get to power rankings coming up in just a second. Week 14 power rankings. I can't believe it's week 14, but here we are, and it's week 14, and Baker Mayfield has a new team. But first, OBJ looking for his new team in Dallas on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, On Monday night, he went to the Mavs game, and there were, let's go, Cowboys. OBJ, you're the Cowboy. You know, all of these things, uh, chants that were breaking out at the Mavericks game. Luka Doncic was uh, commenting on it, and the full recruiting trip was on, and I'm sure he was feeling the love, and yet reports indicate that the Dallas Cowboys have some concerns about that surgically repaired knee that, that is – Uh, underwent a a second ACL reconstruction surgery. And it it sounds like, at least based on these reports, that the Cowboys wonder if Odell Beckham Jr. will be ready to go essentially before the end of the regular season, which would be in mid-January. That's a good question. Was it the same knee? I never got... I never knew. It It was the same knee. So the, the the first surgery... Apparently, and there's a lot of insiders that have had information on this, so I'm I'm just sharing what they've reported on. But if, apparently, the initial surgery was not done and was not nearly as successful as they had hoped. And the the optimism is is that this one was done not only properly, but it's going to be able to take care of the problem long term. Right. And he got hurt late. He got hurt in the Super Bowl. He got hurt in the last game of the year, which is in February, right? Yep. Yep. So, February thirteenth. And he is a little older than you know. Obviously, he's a seasoned player now. So he might not heal up as fast. The thing is, too, is I don't believe Odell is trying to be a rental player just for this year. I think he wants to parlay this. Wherever he signs now, he wants to stay. So he's probably asking for uh, a multi-year deal and something that will leave him in place so he's not doing this whole thing again three or four months from now. But, yeah, they're in a bit of a quandary. And then the Cowboys, Michael Gallup, who they, who had a knee injury, He's actually playing well and looked good. He's probably played the best games the last two weeks. Uh, and the Dallas Cowboys offense is clicking. They scored 54 points. I don't, they ain't doing them all on offense, but they scored a lot of points the other day. So the thing is, is it, is it worth the risk for them to take a chance and bring him in knowing that he might not be ready? I say yes, because this is the same staff that took a chance on Jalen Smith. And it's because mm-hmm. their doctor had did the surgery on his, on his foot and his nerves. And the time when they signed Jalen Smith, or they drafted Jalen Smith, Jalen Smith could, couldn't walk without a limp. And uh, I just think they have to just do the due diligence, and maybe they're just putting it out there a little bit to try to knock the value down some. But the second he goes to visit somebody else who might be a contender, whether it's the 49ers or whoever, I think Dallas will come to his senses. And uh, I think all he has to do is go take a trip to Minnesota and you start thinking about a second round matchup with them and having oh, to deal with those three receivers. And oh, then I think Jerry Jones would put a center plane to him and, and bring him back to Dallas and sign him quick, fast, and in a hurry. You know, the perfect fit for him. And I think he's going to sign with Dallas and find a way because he's just going to be feeling the love. And Jerry Jones is really good about that. Dallas has certainly tried to wrap their arms around OBJ the past couple of days. There's a team I cover. Cincinnati Bengals, and we're not really talking about them on this podcast, but I saw them beat the Chiefs the other day. And you know what the Chiefs need, Tony Wiggins? Take it off the top. They need another weapon. And they don't need another weapon for next week or two weeks from now or four weeks from now. No, they need it for matchups against the Bills, matchups against the Bengals, matchups potentially in the Super Bowl. And, yeah, that could be Kadarius Tony, you know, the former first-rounder who's dealing with a hamstring right now. But why not give yourself another option? So if I'm the Chiefs, I try to to sneak in the back door here of these OBJ sweepstakes. And I know they've been mentioned, but they haven't hosted him for a visit or anything like that. There's no, you know, love fest like there is, uh, you know, right now at uh, in Dallas and and at Mavericks games. But that would be the place, and and you could structure it to where you give him a little money this year, but then next year it's backfilled and, and you make it work cap wise where he gets a lot of guaranteed dollars next year. I don't know. I don't know where he ends up. I still think the Cowboys are the favorite, but it's certainly 
uh, an interesting situation, especially with the medical c concerns. Did did that report leak? By the way, I always ask this when reports come out. Why did that leak? Did that leak because they're worried about the negotiations with OBJ? That right. might be it. It might be a money thing. It might be that simple. They might not have any concerns. And it's like, ah, he might not play till mid-January. That, that might be all this is. But uh, certainly interesting nonetheless. Another storyline, and we're just loaded. Tuesday was busy, busy, busy. OBJ's former quarterback with the Browns, former number one overall pick Baker Mayfield, claimed by the Los Angeles Rams, will Sean McVay save Baker Mayfield's career? Will Baker Mayfield be able to rejuvenate his career in Los Angeles with Matt Stafford on injured reserve and the Rams battered, beaten without Cooper Cup right now and uh, really not even treading water, below water, going into the last month of the season? It's difficult to question a team that won a Super Bowl but I have questioned a lot of things that they have done over the last couple of years with giving away all of their draft picks um, to not building the offensive line, uh, to drafting Tutu Atwell. This was about at the top of the list of a head scratcher for me because I have no idea why they did it. They're not winning anything. They're done this year. They're finished. Okay. I'm sure they're probably in the top, the bottom five or six of our power rankings without me even looking at it this week. And I don't know why they did it unless they don't care about their draft position next year because the pick doesn't belong to them anyway. And they're trying they're going to try to salvage and win as many games as they, they can just because it's LA and maybe they wanted to keep it away from the 49ers, but I heard the 49ers weren't interested in them anyway. This one is a bit, a bit of a head scratch or maybe they just want to get him in and say, Hey, look, you ain't going at, at worst, you're going to be the backup here in the future so we're not in this position again but this is this was weird to me it's totally weird to me that uh the rams of all teams picked them up yeah it is it is weird it, it, no doubt about it and I, i'm just looking i'm just curious because yeah they're 15th in in a, a 16 team nfc they're the only team they have a better record than in the nfc is the rams and last I checked, the, or, or then the, is the Bears. And last I checked, the Rams are not in the NFC South. So that is not going to be good enough to work yourself into a wild card. So I'm just putting that out there. We're not even going to try to play the schedule game. Here's why I think they did it. One, just out of necessity and need. But two, what do the Rams not have any of? They don't have any draft picks. Well, if Sean McVay can sprinkle a little Sean McVay dust on Baker Mayfield, and he just shows some flashes, especially without Cooper Cup in that Rams offense over the next five games, what, what, what does that do? Well, it gives them a chance to get a compensatory pick in a couple of years. And that sounds silly, and it sounds whatever, but I think that might be it. It might be, all right, well, let's just see if he's got anything left. We like the player. It's a million dollar flyer. And who knows? Maybe he plays well for us. Maybe his stock is down enough to where he could be Matt Stafford's backup because Matt has some questions moving forward. Or maybe he plays well enough and, and signs elsewhere to compete for a starting job and you get a compensatory pick in a couple of years. So, or, or maybe uh, Matt Stafford has some real issues and, and it's more maybe. serious than we think. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's that's the other one because it, it's not like they're going to have picks to, to to trade to get some high end star quarterback this offseason. I just I don't I don't see that happening. And and by the way, just a quick note on the 49ers, they did not put in a claim for Baker Mayfield, which by the way, in some 49ers fans, that's a mistake. I'll I'll throw it out there. I think that's a mistake. And I know what Richard Sherman said. Richard Sherman said, ah, I, I wouldn't want him all that. Whatever. I, I think Baker Mayfield and, and Shanahan's offense could, could be at least decent. I would have put in a claim. They wouldn't have gotten him anyway. Yeah, I, I just think when you're the 49ers, having a guy who's played games and who has won some games in the league is better than having someone who hasn't. And Exactly. Uh, and uh, besides, we've been told that Shanahan, when it comes to offense, running backs and quarterbacks, he can make everybody look good, right? You saw McVay. McVay, McVay feels like he can do it, and they're from the same tree, basically. So, yeah, I totally agree with you. I can't wait to get to these power rankings. Yeah, let, let, let's dive into it real quick. And uh, One more note there uh, on Jimmy Garoppolo. He suffered the, the injury. It is not a Liz Frank injury. There is a chance, at least an outside chance, and this could have impacted their thinking right. that he could return late in the postseason. But up next, like Tony said, it is power rankings time. But first – 
Today's show brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all things sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from the NFL to the college football playoff. Did they get it right? Maybe you want to wager on who's going to win the Heisman Trophy. Point is, you can wager on all of those things and so much more at Bet Online. It's the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. I know there's a lot of options out there, but I've used bet online. I've had success with them. You're going to love it. It's easy to na- navigate free to sign up. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more bet online where the game starts. Starting All with right, us, let's, right? Yeah. It starts with us as I cut you yeah. off. Sorry about that, Tony. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's dive into these week 14 power rankings and, you know what we should start with? Where, oh, where are the Rams? The Rams are 29th. 29th Jew. <laughs> <laughs> I would have taken the over on that going into the year, but clearly it's been a rough go of it for the Los Angeles Rams. Let's start at the top. The Philadelphia Eagles move from two to one. The Chiefs fall to number two following their loss to the Bengals. The Bills coming at three. The Cowboys four. Bengals five. Vikings six. 49ers drop to seven. Dolphins eight. Ravens nine. Titans Round out the top ten. Did the Bengals beat the Cowboys head to head in Dallas recently? They did not. No. They lost. They, they they lost to the Cowboys week two. Yeah, it was it was a one score game, but yeah, and Dak didn't play, so that that matters. Okay, too. all right. So Dallas deserves to be. I think I actually put Dallas a little bit higher, and the Bengals also. I think I had Buffalo at five, but I don't have a problem with that list. The Vikings continue to perplex everyone because if you look at their numbers, they look like total frauds, but yet still they keep winning. Yep. And sometimes that's all that matters. Uh, 11 through 20, uh, 11 through 21. The Jets stay put at 11. The Seahawks move up to 12. The Buccaneers stay put at 13. What a weird game that was. Strange. Oh, weird, weird, weird. Uh, The Chargers 14. The Commanders 15. The Giants move up a spot to 16. The Lions move up a spot to 17. The New England Patriots fall to 18. The Packers moving on up a little bit at 19, followed by the Browns that stay put at 20. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, these two teams go head-to-head this week at 21. It's going to be a good game. And uh, Watson came back and struggled in Houston. Uh, And I know people were not too sad about that. A lot of folks weren't. Um, I'm interested to see the Giants and the Commanders sitting there side-by-side at 15 and 16. Also, Seattle and Tampa, if they can move up and get to the bottom half of that top 10 if the Jets and the Titans continue to – not win games to finish it out. We got the Falcons at 22. Arthur Smith's quietly done a real good job with what I thought was one of the two or three worst rosters in the league. Arizona's at 23, big disappointment. The Raiders sort of looking respectable back at 24. The Saints are 25. The Jaguars are 26. Bears 27th. Panthers, Rams, Colts, Broncos, and John Hickman and Cody Davis's. Houston Texans are 32. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I have a confession. I want to put the Broncos 32 so bad. They might I be. I, I want to see those two teams play. They might I, be uh, Denver. I, I, don't, I don't know, man, because Houston stinks. They, everybody, every, let's be honest here, everybody outside of Cleveland and even some Browns fans were like, all right, wouldn't mind seeing Watson struggle. And they he struggled. He was awful. And the Texans are just so bad that they still lose by double ditch. I mean, they are just awful. Yeah. Um, and, and the Broncos, less ride. I mean, how, how do you lose that game? You, you give right. up 10 points. You can't even – Russell, 10 points? So – what a what a bad bottom half of the league there is. Uh, the Bears are at least entertaining to watch sometimes because of Justin Fields. Your Jaguars, yeah, it's rough. Yeah, R- yeah rough it's a little, out there. A little rough out here. I tell you this: the team that I believe out of all of these teams that's actually in the worst place for their future is Denver yep. at thirty-one. I don't. They gave up. I think the pick that they got is going to be like the number two or number three pick this year. And they and they're on the hook for a, a couple of hundred million, and Russell Wilson is absolutely terrible. So yep. I can't. And they got a coach that they probably want to get rid of. I know those new owners want a, a total reset, man. It's like what did we get ourselves into? Because they got a long, long way to go. They do have. They I think they have a what? What did they get for Chubb? Did they get a first from Miami, or did they get a second? Uh, I believe for, they got a first. I believe I thought they okay. did. So it won't be too bad. They'll be able to recover a little bit, but 
Denver out of all of these teams, is, he, with Houston, there's nowhere to go but up, and you have a boatload of picks. Denver is terrible. They got it. They did get a first rounder for Bradley Chubb and a, another pick. But yeah, De- Denver's bad. The outlook, not good. And uh, oddly enough, there were some that. Hey, will, will Denver? Will Denver claim Baker Mayfield? No. Would he be yeah. an upgrade? Well, who Who would you rather have if you had to play a game right now? R- Russell team? Wilson. Would you? Okay. Russell Wilson. I'd, I'd rather. Have, let me um. Let me give people this real quick. If you notice that we're not as animated as before or usual. That's because I'm battling something and James is working with me here and I'm dying not to cough right now. But so uh, bear with us. I'll be back. I got a little bug or something going on here. So bear with us. I mainly said that for our superiors and our supervisors. They listen to the show. They're like, what's wrong with them today? You know, but you know what it is. Watching these Jaguars made you sick. See, that might be it. They they need to start playing better and they're not. Yeah, you might be on to something. I tell you what, you want to get on to something, get on to Locked On Sports Today with Peter Bukowski. It's a daily show, about 30 minutes, less than 30 minutes, but all the big stories from around the world of sports, and he uses the local experts from the Locked On Podcast Network. Anything that goes on, we got an expert that'll get on it, and Peter Bukowski lays it down for you every day on the Locked On Sports Today show. Make sure you tune in on that on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast, and it is free also, just like this. Been real, Jamie. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Get well, feel better. I will. And uh, next week, well, we're that much closer to the playoffs, man. It's crazy. This this year is flying by. What could happen next week? We had, we had a loaded show today. What could happen next week that we're going to have to talk about that's going to be this interesting? This is probably one of the most interesting Tuesdays that we've seen in a while because of all of the news. Well, it's Wednesday, but all of the news that broke on Tuesday. Yeah, I, I mean, we didn't even get to Lamar Jackson out one to three weeks at the PCL. Um, you know what could happen next Tuesday? OBJ stiff arms Jerry Jones and joins insert whatever team you think, right? That that would be kind of a, an interesting storyline. No, there's there's not much. This was a a, a wild show. Yeah. It was a wild uh, a wild sports day, and it was uh, it was really exciting. I'm I'm glad you powered through, man, and we were able to get it done. No problem, man. You guys make sure you tune in every single day here and make Locked On NFL your first listen. Take care of each other until next week from James and Tony.